Bata-bata, paano ka ginawa? Ako si Angel Rivero at kasama ko ngayon si Doktora Maria Victoria Tan na isang Cebuana. Asting! Salamat, yeah. Doc! <laughs> Thank you for having me, Angel. You're very welcome. We have uh, so many questions for you. Oh, okay. And we're very excited to hear uh, what a Cebuana doctor has to share. Um, first of all, let's go to the preventive side of fertility. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're usually talking about how to solve infertility. Mm -hmm. Pero baka naman, Doc, there are ways na we can slow down this uh, this process. aging process and yung pagiging infertile ng isang tao. Yes. So, again, my buntag mm. from Cebu. <laughs> so, uh, you're right, Angel. Uh, like any other disease, uh, there are what you call therapeutic measures, but there are also what you call preventive measures. Mm -hmm. So, basically, for infertility, number one is age. So, Yun talaga. Yeah, so okay. the, the one way to prevent, actually, uh, getting diseases that cause infertility is to try to achieve your pregnancy at a younger age. So, don't for those young moms, don't try to delay or put set aside your uh, car your reproductive career for <laughs> other priorities career. yes it is a career too mm -hmm. so um, try to try to achieve or plan your your family building your family at a younger age so that's one mm -hmm. number two is lifestyle okay. so um, you'll be surprised to know that a lot of diseases that can cause infertility have a metabolic back and a hormonal background which in turn is actually affected by what you eat and um, what things you do do you smoke or do you exercise or do you not exercise so you can't just always blame your genes well genes is plays a big part okay but eventually you know those genes translate into something else some processes and some of those processes are metabolic so when you say metabolic, it has something to do with how your body metabolizes uh, uh, substances like sugar, for example. Okay. So in this day, in this day and age, our society is fast, uh, fast-paced. We're eating in fast foods. Uh, we we like comfort foods. Yeah. Right. Filipino spa. Yes. Oh. And then you know we sit in the car stuck in traffic for many hours, and so you pop a. Uh, uh, junk, heat, junk food, oh, and chips, and all that. Traffic. So a lot of processed foods, a lot of carbohydrates, uh, unhealthy carbs, uh, saturated fats. So these are the things that you can actually try to avoid uh, so that you maintain your health, and part of that is maintaining your fertility. That's very interesting because that means we actually have a hand yes. in... Uh, in playing a role to keep that fertility yes. as long as possible. In fact, if I may add, Angel, a lot of failures, I do get patients who fail in an IVF cycle and, the, and they go for a repeat cycle and then they succeed. And sometimes the only thing that they needed to do was fix their diet and get some exercise. Really? Yes. But um, Doc, the exercise part, how does that help the entire picture. So the diet, kasi parang the hormones and then the sugar, yes. but the exercise, does that um, make your reproductive system healthy? Well, it does impact on the hormones as well. Ah. So you know that um, the fats in our body, they're peripheral sources of a hormone called estrogen. So it's, it's not just no way. our ovaries that produce it, but some other substances hormones like androgens or the we do have male hormones too but these male hormones can get converted to estrogens in the peripheral uh, periphery through fats so what? an excess fat would actually also derange your hormones in that way Aye. so exercise drops that down exercise also sort of corrects metabolic derangement so even the way you metabolize your sugar how your cells use it up how you you know move around the sources of energy uh, uh, for for your activities will be dictated by your exercise that's so refreshing because it's like it's not always gamot 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 yeah, it's procedure. empowering it's empowering yes. that's right mm -hmm. thank you for that doc <laughs> Mayon, let's also talk about the timely diagnosis yeah. of, uh, of patients doc. Mm -hmm. so when it comes to ivf mm -hmm. um it's commonly seen as the last resort kasi mm -hmm. pinakamahal yeah. parang 
isa sa pinakakomplikado. Yes. So, yun talaga yung impression namin, Doc. Mm-hmm. Tama ba yun? Uh, actually, Angel, that's not correct. In fact, no. no, yes. So, that's the one thing you have to remove from your minds is that IVF is not the last resort. It may not be for everybody. Not all patients will need IVF, but there will be some patients whose medical condition causing the infertility would actually require IVF as the only resort. So sometimes it's um, the couple may be afflicted with a condition Mm -hmm. that only IVF can treat. So a patient need not necessarily be taken aback if the doctor immediately says, I think you need IVF. Yes, because the I do see this a lot in my patients that you have an absolute indication, like they have obviously blocked tubes. It's not going to work anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're they're what they call um, distorted to a point that you could no longer repair them. So Mm -hmm. example would be hydrosaltinges. Anyway, let's not go too technical, but bottom line is sometimes the male also would have sperm counts only like ranging from 100,000. This is what you call severe oligo, there are zoospermia or very low sperm counts. And the only way these patients would actually achieve the pregnancy if these conditions don't change would be through IVF. So even the male factor can determine yes. the requirement of IVF. Severe male factor would oh. require IVF ICSI, in fact, intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So what I wanted to say was that I do see a lot of patients who are recommend or diagnosed with these conditions are told that there there's an these are absolute indications for IVF, but then when you recommend it to them, they feel like, what, you haven't even tried anything else on me? You have not tried giving me these medications? You haven't done IUI yet? Why are you recommending IVF? Isn't that supposed to be a last resort? So, hindi pala absolute hierarchy, hindi no. siya steps? No, okay. in fact, uh, if you do those things on these patients, it's bound to fail, uh-huh. and you just actually wasted not just their money, but you wasted their time. Yeah. And I always tell my patients, you know, money you can earn, money you can get back, you can work on it, but your age, you can never turn back the clock. Mm-hmm. So whatever years you've wasted, uh, you've wasted ample time to have optimally achieved that pregnancy. So bumabalik at bumabalik pa rin doc sa age. Ngayon, when it comes yes. to IVF, I mean, to me, it sounds like, well, you're getting the egg, you're getting the sperm, so parang even if medyo tumatanders na, parang... Mm. I think you don't really outgrow IVF, but do you? Uh, what do you mean outgrow it? Like I mean, you know, you <laughs> don't. <laughs> I mean, do you? Is there is there a time or an age na it's no longer it's no longer feasible for you either pre-menopause? Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, the current concept is that women are born with a constant with a fixed number of oocytes, and then we just deplete it through the years. And Every time when we we're born, doc, it's like millions. Yes, but atresia, which is the process of uh, cell death, mm-hmm. apoptosis, uh, it happens to hundreds of eggs and sometimes even thousands of eggs every month. So only one is actually ovulated, but hundreds are recruited together with that one, but only one survives that and the rest dies. And so you're not, you're wasting these oocytes. Oh. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, um, when we get, uh, when we do IVF and we get an egg, we get a sperm, it's not just a matter of having these gametes. What's important is that we get them with good quality. I see. And age, of course, is a degenerative process. So there are many things that happens to the cells that would impact on the quality of these gametes. And you might end up with abnormal embryos. I'm sure you've heard that there are unsuccessful stories of IVF. Like you think, why will it be unsuccessful? They already took my egg, you took my sperm. I mean, ginawa mo na lahat yan. How can it fail? And one of the reasons is because we we get very poor quality embryos. So therefore, a person can become too old for IVF. Yes. Ay! So, uh, too old for even any other fertility intervention and that's why you really want to make sure you get a timely diagnosis Mm -hmm. it's a correct diagnosis you recommended the right treatments Mm -hmm. and you do it uh, on time meaning don't waste too much time so IVF is not necessarily the last resort yes and 
you better hurry because <laughs> time may be running out for IVF as well. Yes, but um, I want to also stress that IVF doesn't treat everybody. Okay. Meaning, uh, I also on the on the opposite end of the spectrum, I do see patients who come in and say, "Doctor, I want to do IVF." Ah, As in okay. immediately, <laughs> it, it's like, "Oh, tete, para para lang muna sandali. Let's make a diagnosis." So. Uh, you have to start with a correct diagnosis mm -hmm. because if you jump into IVF and you don't know what really went, what's wrong with this patient, even that cycle can fail. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's best to really go through a process mm -hmm. and that process um, allows you to achieve the correct diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And then the doctor get, gives recommendations as to how to treat them and you follow that, okay? Don't rush into something and don't also delay too much. Okay. All scientific. Yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> okay, okay. It all seems to make very much sense there. Um, lastly, Doc, do you have advice to our viewers about fertility, reproductive health, and everything under this, this part topic. of the topic? Yeah. yeah. So basically, as we spoke uh, about a while ago, uh, don't feel like you are at a loss already of wh what to do. Don't feel frustrated. Number one, understand that you can empower yourself by, by knowing that you are in charge. You ca you're in charge because you make decisions for yourself. That includes the kind of food you eat, the exercise you do, what, wh when do you see your doctor? Are you going to be compliant with your doctor's advices? So don't feel helpless. A lot of these uh, the processes in infertility, you are in charge, okay? Wow. And the last thing you want to do is to get stressed about it. Yeah. So stress is a negative factor. At the end of the day, all these hormones we secrete in the body, it's dictated by what we call endorphins. And endorphins are stress hormones. Basically, mm -hmm. they're affected by stress. Mm -hmm. And so the best thing to do is feel that you know you're doing the steps that you were recommended to do. Be happy with that already. Tell yourself you'll take it one step at a time and just don't be stressed about it. Okay, attitude is very attitude important. Attitude is very important. Yes. I remembered one question, pala, Doc, that uh, someone asked me yesterday. Um, she said uh, she wanted to know if uh, manifestations such as parang falling hair and parang gaining weight could be an indication of her also losing her fertility. Yes. Well, uh, lo um, we hair loss can be due to uh, hormone imbalances like too much male testosterone or male hormone like testosterone. Uh, gaining weight can be a metabolic problem like uh, issues with sugar metabolism mm -hmm. and all those impact on fertility. Okay. So, but you see, these conditions do not necessarily have only one possible cause. There could be many, and so what's important is you take charge. Go see a doctor, find out what's wrong with you, see what you can do as far as your lifestyle mm -hmm. is concerned. Maybe kaya naman you're gaining weight is kasi naman kumakain ka ng <laughs> buffet every day. Buffet. Yeah. So, uh, take charge of your health. Agree. Take home for the day. Take charge of your health. Yes. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Angel. <laughs>